today we are going to talk about like you know because you have had this fascinating journey as a fresher and you have bagged yeah. some solid admits so like you know yeah. let us talk about what freshers can do because sometimes it can be daunting for a fresher yeah. so what can they do to like you know ha- have the best shot at their dream schools yeah. so let us begin with your profile so that people have like you know a good understanding of so where did you study what did you study in college sure yeah so i did my bachelor's in computer science from manipal university jaipur yeah uh, how about your scores what is your gpa gre scores like yeah so my gpa was was 9.3 and uh, my gre was 330 and my toefl was 112 okay so high scores my third year i decided to apply and by then i had a 9.1 gpa and i just throughout my third year i made sure to keep it up because yeah. you only get six semesters as a fresher so exactly exactly yeah. and that's a good point because some people they decide too late and if they have a bad gpa by then especially below 8 then it definitely i've seen it does make a negative impact on the application yeah. so yeah. that's a good point so and and how strong were your projects so one of my research projects actually got a best research award from my university and in in an ieee competition as well as that i participated in it was a research competition we were second among about 50 projects in my track okay so so one of the projects i put a lot of heart into that that was quite good okay. and one of my projects was above average and one was average the research one okay okay so one yeah. solid research project two more projects and uh, yeah. i i believe so you don't have work experience but you did have internships So yeah, tell us a little that. about how relevant or strong they were. So I would the in my internships were not in you know big name companies at all. They were just in two startups. But I did a lot of good work there, so I was able to write about them in my resume as well as my SOP projects. And I was also able to get a good LOR from my internship manager. They were they were pretty technical projects. You would say relevant to computer science. Yeah. 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 Okay. Pretty much. Okay, so you had roughly one strong research project, one internship project, and two academic projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Cool, cool. So let us now talk about when exactly did you decide that you were going for MS, and how have you been building your profile since then? Yeah. Okay, so it was early in my third year when the companies that were coming for internship placements and all of that were not quite good, and it was pandemic time. So it kind of got me thinking that. maybe there is a better place to do a job if there is more money so for, so i looked up the software development roles and salaries in india and in us and i realized the gap was pretty big like if if over a period of time the gap would just become incredibly huge if you work for 10 years in us versus in india so hmm. i realized if i had to do it then i don't want to wait uh, a, a couple of more years here i would just start the go directly get my masters done early and start earning there early so so when i decided this i started off with my gre prep first so because it's like i said it's quite important as a fresher you want to have everything under your right. belt as you can so i did a gre prep for about 3 months uh, using a website known as gregmat he is very popular these days and he is quite good at gre so, okay and i scored a 330 in gre and then uh, i focused a lot on research projects so i approached professors and you know brainstormed what problem statements would be and i and i did not do any multiple projects in parallel i did one project and then one paper and the paper on that and then project in the paper like that so i went like that and i had three research projects done by the end of my third year and then i could focus on my toefl and my statement of purpose and letter of recommendations and all of those so it's important to you know work under faculty is because the lors that you get from them will, will be able to have those points right if yeah. they are just about how good you were in class and you scored good many people have those elevators but you have something like a specific instance in the project you were doing that you came up with a right. good solution that would be impactful so right. doing pro- project with the professors and doing an internship with, and maintaining good relations with the manager there could be good for your elevators as well yeah no i think it's very important and people don't realize it that like you know you can't force somebody to give a good lor so you ha- yeah, you need yeah. to have that rapport with them and only if you have done the work you have spent good time with them they feel like giving you the lor then only you get that incredible lor exactly. so the sooner yeah. you can start you can also be mindful that hey this is a potential professor or a project guide that i can take lors from exactly so all yeah. the more reasons to start early right yeah 
Um, so when did you take GRE in terms of timeline? Uh, so basically, uh, it was kind of one and off thing. It was a bit complicated, but if I had to put it in a linear fashion, I would say in the months of January, February, and March, I got done with my GRE prep and GRE. So that and would then, be your sixth semester. Exactly. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. And then I focused, like I put all of my heart into research projects and my GPA. Uh, okay. I spent a lot of effort on them and to I get to those them. exams done with at at an early point so that you have more time to focus on your core projects, SOP, yeah. and all the other uh, yeah. concrete part of the application. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because right. this is advantageous because, like I said, if you do GRE and physics in parallel, that works absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. you wanna have as much as much intensive prep with these tests as possible because GRE is a very tricky exam. It also gives you enough time if you have to retake. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Yeah. So what, let's come to the basic question is, what is the biggest disadvantage that you think freshers have when it comes to application? Yeah, I would say like, you know, not having enough depth and having more of a breadth. So freshers usually spend time a lot in exploring different fields, like for computer science, you can say app development, web development, all of, you know, all of that. And if somebody has not decided about masters in time, he might not have enough, enough time to go into a very deep depth of a topic. That could be the case. But and in, in the industry, you work on really complicated projects too, right? You cannot work as a fresher or by your own. So you get a lot more exposure into the different fields there are, and you get to write about whatever you've learned in your SAP yeah. and your resume. So being in the industry definitely gives you a lot of advantage, but at the same time, it I just felt like it was not for me. I would prefer yeah. going directly and doing my interview prep. Right, so basically what you're saying is that people with work experience will have uh like more things or more number of projects to write about. Whereas a fresher yeah. will have like, you know, only academic projects, maybe internships. So that's where you having yeah. done that research project or was also yeah. came handy. It gave you that like, you know, solid core thing to talk yeah. about. Uh, yeah. Okay. And that's why you decided early and you spent all that time trying to compensate for this lack of depth that freshers usually yeah. have in their applications. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's a good point and like you know there's a there's a concern with many thing in fact this is one of the most search queries on our blog is do you should you should people wait to ha like get work experience before application or or not so you clearly did not wait for it for sure this is also something you deliberately kept uh, you were mindful of like to have high scores right since you were applying yeah. so tell me more about like you know why did you decide to like go right after your college and not wait yeah, yeah, for the work yeah. ex yeah, yeah. So, you know, I've, I heard from a lot of people that once they start started doing their jobs and stuff, once the money started coming in, you start to think about the future and how this money could be enough being in India and in the long term, yeah. you would be okay. But you have only one life and you want to do all the adventures you can and, you know, take all the risks you can. So I, I felt that I would rather prefer to go directly and, you know, just start earning early because... That would also be an opportunity cost if I waited in India. I would not be earning for those couple of years in India. Yeah. In US. yeah, right. What you can earn in US is obviously better opportunity also, higher pay packages, but yeah. also better kind of work. So why wait for yeah. that? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Got it. This, this, this thing always is like, you know, exciting how people are thinking about it. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we did talk about like, you know, so to compensate for the lack of work experience, you did more projects. You did yeah. better kind of projects, research papers and all in your college. Um, yeah. Let us talk about LORs. Uh, for freshers, yeah. usually it's like, you know, professors you can approach. So who did yeah. you take your LORs from? How did you make yeah. sure that they were uh, good enough? Two of my LORs were from the my research guide. So I did three projects and from two of those guys, I took my LORs. And one of them was my internship manager with whom I had a good relationship with during my internship. And I did good work. So I, so whichever professors you feel like, you know, you have done the best work under, you can approach them and you can tell them like, like I, like I am so-and-so student, I have so-and-so GPA. I have like, you know, like we did this work and I, in this project I did so-and-so and so work. And you, you can make, remind them of the work you did. And like that, they'll remember to put those things in the LOR. And that's how you can approach your professors for your LORs by doing good work with them and, you know, reminding them of, that when you need the awards and for in, for your internship you want to be as sincere as you can you want to keep good relationship with your manager and you know whenever you need the award you can again approach them and give remind them of the pointers and the things you did 
right and this yeah. is why also i think having a internship helps because you can get a professional lor that yeah. way it adds another dimension yeah. to your profile so absolutely yeah so i always prefer to have a mix of lor instead of all three academic lors yeah. um yeah. so right um and i think uh, as a fresher you maybe have an advantage there because your professors know you right then like you know you have recently been in touch with true. them and they may be able to write more concrete information um yeah right the professors interact with hundreds of kids so after a couple of exactly. years it might be difficult for yeah. them even though they might agree to write it but it, yeah. it might be a bit more difficult yeah yeah uh anything any other tips about lor like you know what what freshers no, no. should be mindful of uh i would say you know like don't write generic lors you know like just you were a good student in class and you did so good to and so grade those are pretty common in admissions committee i am pretty sure are tired of uh, hearing the same point like good student in class and all of that talk about a unique project or unique situation that you did with your professor so that he will be able to put those points in your lor so you know yeah th- that's the main point i would say so like, take lor you know, from between. professor with whom you have done projects as opposed to just like you know somebody who is take you are taking a yeah. course with you may not have enough things to write about that the yeah. yeah yeah okay okay cool um and uh, of course you have good admin so just a quick word of like how did scholar strategy help you uh, where do you think we added most value yeah sure so like i contacted like the staff and my uh, like the aryan topal were done during my statement of purpose when i was to start that so i just thought that as a fresher you don't have enough depth in your field and your topics so it might be better to approach somebody who will be able to you know guide you on your essays and you know just if you have written an sop then then they can watch it watch over and make sure there are no rookie mistakes that you might make that and you know they are because they are phds and admissions committees are pretty you know like intelligent people so you want to be as deep as you can with your recipes and as good as you can so your essays could be a big factor in top schools the probably the biggest factors in many top yeah. schools so you want to make sure you get re- you get it reviewed by a good person and i would say like you know my sop was not good like whatever i wrote by myself so whatever feedback like you gave me that you know absolutely transformed it like it was quite rocky it had a lot of uh, beginners mistakes so i incorporated your feedback and it was absolutely transformed in a great awesome. way awesome thank you so much so sop is where uh, you felt that i was able to add more yeah. value sops and right now whatever the internship master class sessions you are holding it, it 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 they are really helpful like i would have never thought of okay. you know coming up with a company this and all of that so hmm. yeah Okay. Yeah. Parting advice? Any last? Uh, uh, no, just be sincere, and things will happen. Like this process has a lot of self doubt in it. Like, what would happen? Will I be able to get an admit? Will my GRE score be good? Every yeah. step involves a lot of anxiety and a lot of, you know, effort. But don't back down from it because the end goal is absolutely worth it. That's what I right. would say. Right. No, that's a wonderful point. Actually, yeah. after COVID, people have been under so much pressure, and it can the whole application yeah. process because it's so long. It can generate anxiety. I know. How do any Absolutely. any tips on how to keep just sane throughout the process? Absolutely, I would say keep in touch with other applicants. So I'm in touch with my friends who are also waiting for the decisions, and we right. often ran to each other and like, "Kya ho raha hai? Why are the decisions Went not out, coming?" Went huh? out. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you need to have an outlet and yeah. at the same time you need to have people who are reminding you that you are good enough because often times yes. imposter syndrome can absolutely get the better of you and mm. applying outside your country to top schools as a fresher can be very intimidating so you want yeah. that support and ultimately things work out as long as you keep, keep putting in the efforts right so build your support circle so that like you know they are there yeah. when you when you need something because there would be that phases when you feel down you are questioning yourself exactly. right Absolutely. so already have a system in place um, awesome Absolutely. lovely talking to you kartik thank you so much and all the nice best friend. in us we look forward to maybe interviewing you back when you have some more a grad school experience and you can share your advice from there